All right, let's get started creating our UI scene. I'm going to begin here inside the content browser, and here's our UI demo assets package. I'm going to right click and create a new UI scene. Let's give this a group of UI scenes and a name of UI underscore demo underscore button. And we click OK, and we get a blank icon, and in the background, the UI scene editor opened up as well. So let's go ahead and close out the content browser, and I'll take the UI scene editor and maximize this out to full size. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is actually reach over here and switch off the container outline. That way we can see a blue outline for the viewport. It's just a little easier for me to see. And I'm going to drop in our background image. So let's go to the image widget here in the main toolbar. Now I want to drag this from corner to corner. By default, it looks like my drag grid is set to eight. So I'm going to set that way down to like 32. And we'll just drag this out like so. As soon as I'm done, I'm going to click on the selection tool. That way I don't accidentally drag out another image window the next time I click and drag in the viewport. Now obviously this has a texture that we would not want to use. And for this first widget, we're going to change the texture just by overriding the texture in properties. So with the image widget selected, let's come over to the properties panel, jump down under components and expand image component, expand style override, and we have the image reference property, which will hold any texture that we'd like to use to override the current texture. So let's minimize the UI scene editor. I'll pop into the content browser and inside our UI demo assets package, here's our texture UI background. We'll close that and go back into the editor and then I'll just click use selection from content browser and there we go we have our background image it really is that easy okay now just to make sure that things size appropriately if we were to use different resolutions I'm gonna come down to the positioning panel and set scale type for right and bottom to eval position percentage owner and that'll just keep things scaling appropriately it could lead to some stretching if we used a really widescreen aspect but in this case I'm just gonna go with it Okay, now, next we want to add our button. So I'm going to come up to the main toolbar, and we'll click on the button widget, and I'll just drag this out to fill in this panel here in the center of our mesh. Now, this button is going to have a default texture as well. In fact, it's got more than just a texture. It's got several different textures that are applied to the different states of the button. Now, when I say states, what do I mean? Well, even if we take a look here inside the UI scene editor, if I come up to the main toolbar and start mousing over buttons, you'll see some things. Like, you know, the button gets kind of a beveled look to it. If I click on one of these buttons, you'll see it looks like it's actually been depressed a little bit. These are all different textures that are being applied to that button as I work with it, as I mouse over it, as I click it. And the same is true of this button. We have several different textures we can apply to give it different looks, different uh, overall uh, feels as we interact with it. That's all handled through the button style. So it would be good to know what style was applied to this button by default. So I'm going to right click here on the button, come down to edit style and that's going to bring up the editing style window now in short just a, a real quick overview of this window you see some basic options these allow us to change the name of this style under image options you'll see that we can change the texture that's being applied we can change the alignment both horizontally and vertically and we can see a preview now as I click up here in the upper right we can select all of the different states and you'll see that we have different textures assigned to different states. So if we mouse over this object, or when it has focus, I should say, uh, it gets this red outline. When it's pressed, it goes completely black. We have many different settings for the button given its different states. Now, I don't want to change any of this because I don't want to change any default settings. So what we're going to do instead is cancel out of here. And the key thing that I wanted you to get out of that, in fact, I should probably point it out one more time, is that we're using the button background style. So we use that window just to identify our style. And if we take a look here inside the styles tab of the scene tools panel, you'll see the button background style. Now I don't want to edit that as I mentioned, but we can make a copy of it and edit the properties of the copy. So I'm going to right click, come down to create style from selected. Now we need to give this a unique tag and a friendly name. So we'll give this a unique tag of pulsing underscore button and a friendly name of just pulsing button with a space. 
click OK, and here we are. It has all the same settings, and now we can start to override these. What I'm going to do is check pressed, focused, enabled, disabled, and active, and make sure that they are all selected. In doing so, any properties that I change will reach across to all of the different states, and that's important to keep in mind. Now, let's make sure that we take the alpha value. I'm going to pull that up to 100, so we get full on our alpha. Let's also change our default texture. So I'm going to click on the little magnifying glass, which will bring up the content browser, scroll down in our package back to the UI uh, demo assets package, and we'll grab M underscore UI button. You're not limited to just sticking textures in here. We can use materials as well. So we'll click on the uh, use selection or use selected object and content browser button, little green arrow, and there we go. Now, this isn't exactly what we had in mind. And I want to prove that to you before we do anything else. So I'm going to click OK. And it says, you have modified data for an unchecked state. Leaving the state unchecked will cause it to be reverted to the parent value style. And that should be OK in this case, because we're not actually using the targeted tab button. So we'll click OK. Now, currently we don't see anything update because we have yet to apply this style uh, to our actual settings. So I'm going to right click, come down to select style. And now from the drop down, you'll see pulsing button. Choose that, and we do get a pulsing button, but notice it doesn't have that beveled effect. It doesn't have any rounded corners. It's just a pulsing swatch of color. That's not what we were looking for. Now the, the fix to this rests within our style. So let's grab pulsing button, double click it to open it back up. Now just to be on the 100% uh, make sure I've covered everything because I don't like seeing error windows. We don't really need the targeted tab button, but I'm going to go ahead and grab it and make sure that we assign to that as well. Now, before I make any changes, I'm going to make sure that I have select all of my states. You don't always have to do this. If you want to have different results for different states, such as when you click on something, you want the texture to change or anything like that, then you'll want to click on these individually while you make changes so you can change each individual button. However, I'm just going to change everything uniformly just for the sake of simplicity on the video. Now, back to this problem of just having a solid swatch of color. The problem lies right here in our alignment area. The horizontal and vertical alignments, check out the sample position and sample size. Sample position horizontally is 32 pixels in, and we're only sampling 32, uh, 30 pixels. Here we're going 33 pixels in and only sampling 32 pixels. We need to know the resolution of our actual texture. So what I'm going to do is minimize the UI scene editor for just a moment, jump into the content browser, and let's double click on our, actually we don't even have to double click, check it out, right here at the bottom, it says streamed 128 by 256. So that gives us the dimensions right there. So back over inside the UI scene editor, we'll take sample position, set that to zero. If you change a value in these fields, be sure to press the enter key to commit your changes because it's easy to forget to do that and uh, you actually won't see an update. So now let's take the sample size, set that to 128. Sample position vertically, we'll set this to zero. And our sample size, we will set this to 256 and press enter. And there we go. We now have everything nicely aligned. Now, I would like to test this out before we go any further. There's a nice way you can test these. I mean, generally, you're going to get your results right here inside the editor, but it's a good idea to test every now and then. So go ahead and close the UI scene editor and save your package. Please save your package. So let's select the package, hit Control S, and that'll save that. Now, remember, UI demo button is the name of the actual one that we're using right now. So go ahead and select that in the content browser before you close it. Now, I'm going to jump into Kismet. And we're going to test this just by right-clicking and creating a new event for level loaded. Then we'll right-click again, go under new action, jump down to UI scenes, and you'll see open scene. This is really straightforward. It just means that when the level loads and is visible, we're going to open up a UI scene. If we grab the properties of our UI scene action, you'll see the scene property. Select that and click on use selected object in content browser. We're ready to test. Right click, choose play from here, and there we go. Now, this is what our UI currently looks like. Now, it doesn't do anything. We could click on this all day, and you'll just get a little default sound, but nothing particularly useful. Also, notice that it is not pulsing. Now, we're going to fix this here in just a moment. Let's go ahead and get hit escape, and the first time we hit escape, that's going to jump us out of our UI. The second time we hit it, we'll get out of the game. 
Now, back over in the content browser. Let's go back to our UI demo button UI. The first thing I want to solve is that pulsing problem. If we make sure we don't have any widgets selected, then over in our properties window, we're actually looking at the properties for the UI scene itself. And if we scroll down, you're going to see pause game while active. If we turn that off, close, save our package, and then try out the level again, we're getting our music and we're getting our pulsing button. So I can hit escape and jump out. So now that's working. Our next step is going to be to add some functionality to our UI scene. So let's double click on the UI scene once again. Now to add functionality is very easy. It's all handled through Kismet, but keep in mind that what you're about to see is a special Kismet. It's UI Kismet. And it doesn't have all of the functionality of full level Kismet inherent, but we can link over and actually use our level Kismet and I'll show you how. To access this, just double click on your button. And here we are inside the UI Kismet. Now you'll notice that we have several different sequences just for this button, and basically it's a set of sequences for each state. So as the button goes into its different states, you can have all sorts of different things take place. What I'm gonna do is jump into the focus state, and you'll see by default, there's an on-click event. So when the player clicks on this button, it's already set to have something happen. Now we just have to control what will happen. What I'm gonna do is right click, come over to new action, jump down under level and you'll see activate level event. This will trigger any remote event that you want, that you call by name inside the properties. So here inside the event name, let's set this to uh, begin sequence, press enter. We'll take the on click, connect its output to the input of the activate level event. When we are finished, we wanna close the UI. That's real easy to do. Let's right click, go over to new action, go to UI scenes and choose close scene. Upon success of our activate level event, we'll plug this to the input of our close scene and check out the close scenes properties. By default, it's set to auto target owner. The owner of this UI or of this Kismet sequence is the actual UI that we're showing. So that means that by default, this is gonna close the UI that we're looking at. So it's perfect. We don't have to do anything else. Now let's go ahead and close this. And before I do anything else, I do want to add a label just telling the player to click the button. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Let's come up here to my widgets and I'll click on the label widget and we'll drag this out just underneath our button. Now we need to give this some different text, obviously, because it currently says initial label text, which is pretty boring. If we come over to the properties, we can jump down to data expand data source and you'll see the markup string change this to whatever you want this to read let's say click button to begin sequence and press enter now we can make this look a little bit more interesting uh, we have some text alignment buttons up here up top we can align the text horizontally and vertically and that looks pretty good but i'd like to actually change the font and that's handled through changing the style of the text uh, widget itself the label widget so i'm going to right click on this widget choose select style and here are all of the different styles we could apply now i'm going to grab one of the ones that's already here in this case ambex scaled which is just some text using the ambex font if we were to try to change uh, this style you can see it is listed right up here at the top we can do exactly what we did before if you'd like you can right click and create a new style from it. But if you double click it, you'll see that you have some text options here that allow you to choose the font, the clipping mode, the spacing, etc., and so forth. Now let's cancel out of here. That's gonna work for my label. So let's go ahead and just deselect and you see click button to begin sequence. I think that's gonna work just fine. Now, as just a reminder before I do anything else, back over here inside of our UI Kismet, we set up an activate level event called begin sequence. It's important to keep that in mind, so that's why I reminded you. Uh, let's go ahead and close out the UI scene editor. We're technically done with it at this point. Uh, we can also close out the content browser and open up our levels kismet. We already have our open scene. However, I'm going to take out our level loaded event. I'm gonna disconnect our trigger used event. And now when the player uses the trigger, I want them to open up our UI scene. So how is the flow gonna work? We have used the trigger, we've opened our UI scene, now we just need to call that remote event. So let's right click, come down to new event, select remote event, and we're gonna set the name to, you guessed it, begin 
sequence. Now, the little green checkbox will not update here because UI Kismet and actual level Kismet, they can talk to each other, but they kind of exist in two different worlds. So don't look for this to actually update. And we can plug this into Enable. We can plug it into Play Music and Play. And we should be done at this point. So let's give this a quick test. We'll run up to our switch, use it, and we see our UI scene. Let's go ahead and click the button. And it looks like everything's working great. Now everything else is really just a result of the kismet. So I'm going to go ahead and skip out of that. The important thing is that we were able to quickly create a UI scene give it some functionality, and get it integrated into the level. So I hope this gives you some basic grounding so that you can go in and start experimenting on your own, building your own UI scenes, and using them as a way to add a new level of interactivity to your games and levels. That's going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.